Let's move on to the overview of SimClear. So the paper has four major components. Uh, one is the composition of image transformation. The next is the nonlinear projection head. After that, they like emphasize pretty hard on temperature and normalization of the output. And then finally, you have like extremely large path sizes and large negative samples. So yeah, we'll go into the details of each one of them in the next slides. The composition of augmentation. So, so if you have an image and you just have a function, you can take that image, have a function and have a transform version of that image. And a second function will say do another kind of a transform on the same image. Now a composition of these two would simply be doing like applying the first function on the output of the second function and hence you have this uh, whatever we yeah whatever we have in the slide here these augmentations uh you know they're it's more than just two in most of these approaches it's a sequence of maybe five or six uh something to keep in mind is that they're stochastic as well so the image might be rotated 30 degrees or 50 degrees or 90 with some probability um and really what you're trying to do through these augmentations is that you're trying to make the network invariant to those kind of changes right so a cat rotated 90 degrees should still be the same cat uh, it shouldn't matter so you want to teach the network to ignore those kind of um, changes. Yeah, moving on to the nonlinear transformation. So what SimClear tells us is that after you have an encoder, like you take an image, pass it through a generic encoder, this can be a ResNet50 in this case, you get representations called H in this case. And then what you do to that H, before you apply the contrastive loss, you pass that H through a nonlinear transformation. And different versions of uh, the different papers which have been using contrastive loss have like different versions of these, uh, this nonlinear transformation, like CPCB2 uses a pixel CNN here, or Perl was another paper, but that used a linear transformation. But SimClear has basically emphasized that you do need a nonlinear transformation over here before you apply the contrastive loss on this. And just to be clear on the code itself. Yeah. Yeah. And just to be clear on this part the like what we're talking about in terms of the mention is you have this image which can be you know three channels by so many pixels by so many pixels and then the encoder is going to give you an output which is going to be uh it's a, i guess it's an it's a vector here no? not a matrix uh in simclear yeah yeah so it's going to give you a single vector so this h has call it 20 48 times two times two dimensions right um is, is that right yeah yeah okay so 20 48 times two times two and then you're going to apply some sort of like nonlinear transformation, uh, most likely just an MLP with like a real loop. And then that's going to give you the Z, which is going to be, I guess you could always um, map it to a different dimension if you wanted to, which I think they do. And they do ablations on this as well. Yeah. So the next important, like the two important parts of the contrastive loss itself is that first you apply the contrastive loss on normalized embeddings. So all your vectors, all the Zs are on the surface of a unit circle. And hence what you're bringing together when you have a contrastive loss, you are basically bringing two vectors on a unit circle close together. That's your positive pair and you're pushing apart all the negative pairs. So the temperature factor is pretty important. So Perl, Moco, all of them use a temperature uh, a value of 0 0.07, but uh, Simpler is a bit different from that. I think simpler, yeah, simpler uses a temperature of 0.5. But again, like to stabilize this loss, the temperature is pretty important. And the final important uh, part of simpler is like they do the whole thing online with the batches they have available. They don't use a memory bank. They don't use any other form of storage for the negative samples. So they just compute negative samples from the batch size they have. And that's why they have they use like really large path sizes. So for CPAR, they go something like 1024 or 2048. And for ImageNet, they have gone as high as 4096. When you look at other approaches, a lot of what they're doing as well is just trying to figure out how to get more negative samples, right? Yeah. Um, so this all, all of this like distributed sync and sharing of, um, of samples is just a way to do that. Um, in this particular case, Simclear, I don't think, do they do something fancy? They do, don't they? Um, uh, they just have a couple of tricks like global batch norm and things like that, but they don't have like a, a MoCo encoder or a yeah, memory bank of any sorts. Got it. Okay.
Yeah, that's why Simclear is like one of the simplest uh, frameworks out there because it doesn't like overcomplicate things with the other stuff. We start with a simple image. Uh, in this case, you can see we have an image of a cat. What we do to that image is apply two sets of stochastic transformation, like a composition of transformation. So you have two versions of the same image. What we do after this is like pass both of these through an encoder. Uh, this can be a standard ResNet 50 encoder, or basically you can, you can swap out any encoder over here. What that gives us is a vector and we call it H over here. You pass that H through a nonlinear head and that like couple of layers of uh, MLP just gives you Z on which you apply the contrastive loss. 